Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're enjoying this Sunday evening. And I'm glad you're here with me today because uh, I have a pretty interesting case study. Um, this case study actually took me about five days to uh, get the client the results he wanted. And the one thing that we both learned from this is A, um, don't be afraid to step out into the unknown and B, um, failure is not if something goes wrong, but to me, failure is when you quit. And this client had a lot of, uh, reasons to quit, but he didn't because he knew the outcome would, you know, be way beneficial than if he just decided to stop and say, ah, oh, you know, it's too expensive. I don't want to, you know, invest in this equipment and stuff like that. So let me just share with you uh, what we went through. OK, so we are going to be covering uh, how to flash program a 2019 Range Rover PCM. OK, for those who are new to the channel, my name is Curtis Harden. I'm an Autel Diagnostic Consultant. I A, help align people with the right diagnostic strategy, and B, I sell the tool to those clients and provide the support that you see in this training. And C, if you're not able to get support and would like training, you can also book a consultation with me, okay? So this is what we are going to be learning today. The right equipment necessary to reprogram the module. Second, the reason why we are reprogramming the module because I don't recommend um, programming modules without having any type of evidence that tells us to do it. And then when to graduate to an OEM VCI. Okay, there are times where I recommend going straight to the OEM. Um, and then fourth, the cost of a Land Rover subscription. And then lastly, how to flash program the PCM module. OK, so what you're going to be needing is the following a Windows 10 laptop. Now, I will tell you, Land Rover um, is very specific on, I guess, the specifications they have. So I would either um, encourage you to get a dedicated laptop for Land Rover or if you do have a laptop with several manufacturers on it, you can have the um, a strategy of partitioning your hard drive so the Land Rover won't conflict with any other uh, software okay um, and then we're gonna need a JT534 so in this case study we have selected the DA DOIP dongle which I'm gonna explain why in uh, later in the presentation we're gonna need your battery maintainer and your OEM subscription okay so let me give you the story this client is a Land Rover specialist. That's all he works on. And he owns the IM608 and he also owns the AutoLogic. Now the AutoLogic, um, he explained to me, it went through some merge and the, he just wasn't able to get the results with the tool. They were having some technical issues and stuff. And then lastly, he started to get a lot of newer vehicles. So he needed something that would accommodate the newer vehicles. So that's when he came to me and I explained to him um, by installing Land Rover's JT534 software um, would not only help solve that problem of accommodating to the newer vehicles, but it would solve his immediate problem addressing the TSB that indicated for us to program the PCM module. Okay, so I had to just give him a quick education on the different softwares that Land Rover has because he wasn't used to them. Okay, he heard of them, but he wasn't used to them. So the, the first diagnostic or programming software they have is called SDD. What does SDD stands for? It stands for System Driven Diagnostics. And this is for vehicles uh, from 2005 to 2017. Now, this will give you diagnostics, uh, guided functions, you know, to help you step by step solve the problem and also special functions and reprogramming capability. OK. Um, from my uh, experience, our J2534s work flawlessly with the SDD. I haven't had any issues with that. Okay. Then uh, there's another software that is called Path Pathfinder. What is Pathfinder? 
Pathfinder software works with a new DOIP interface to diagnose and reprogram 2017 and late model vehicles. So DOIP is almost like a new architecture that um, is installed in these vehicles that transfers data extremely fast. So if your JT5 doesn't have a DOIP protocol, it won't be able to handle that uh, information. And I think DOIP stands for Diagnostics over IP or Diagnostics um, over Internet Protocol, something of that nature. Okay, but you're going to see this in a lot of these newer vehicles coming just because of all the ECU modules in there. They need something that could, um, you know, get data in and out really quickly. Okay, so um, how much is the subscription? So um, at the time, it was $135 per day and uh, 1,600 per year. They do have a monthly subscription, but I don't remember why. Um, the problem that we were having with this, this is very expensive, and um, I was able to get access to a dealer account. So if you're my client, you don't need to pay this much. And with the dealer account, you can also get access to the TSBs as well as the flash programming uh, software, okay? Because just because you buy this, you don't have access to their uh, repair information. You have to buy that separately. You know, they, they, they want to suck everything out of us. <laughs> All right, so when should I graduate to an OEM VCI? So what I actually did was, as I told you, this client had a J2534 that came with the uh, IM608 does not have DOIP protocol. It wouldn't work on this 2019. So I shipped him this Maxi Flash, and believe it or not, um, the software would pick it up, but I don't know, it just wasn't communicating with the car. So it was, it was technically a software issue. Now, why is that? This device is not an approved J2534. It doesn't mean it doesn't like work. It just doesn't mean Autel went with their engineers to get it approved. Therefore, when the engineers on uh, Land Rover side decide to do an update, they will test their OEM tools. So when they publish this update, they know with certainty that their tools will work. They won't tell Altel nothing. So it takes Altel maybe a, a couple weeks or a month to figure out what that update was, and then their VCI will decide to communicate. Okay. So what I had to do was think of a, another solution. And that was looking at their OEM tool. So this is their OEM tool, uh, the Jan Jaguar Land Rover JLR DOIP VCI. Okay, it, it has uh, SDD and Pathfinder in it, and it's the dealer level tool. The, the con is it's expensive, all right? And that's, that's pretty much the biggest problem with going OEM. It's extremely expensive, okay? And I just, I don't know, I, I knew that there was another solution, so I kept on digging. And I found this little dongle here. This is a DA DOIP dongle. And this one goes around 600 bucks and it covers SDD and Pathfinder. And it has the CAN and DOIP protocol on it. Now, what's the difference between the Jaguar Land Rover JLR and this DOIP dongle, okay? It's absolutely nothing, <laughs> okay, okay? As far as I understand, um, the Land Rover JLR DOIP interface um, is made by Bosch and Bosch I guess won the contract uh, with this and I don't know just having that name um, I don't know they, it's just really expensive um, the other dongle the DA DOIP dongle this is made by a company called Diagnostic Associates and from what I understood their engineers work at Land Rover, so I guess they made this just as a uh, cheaper, cheaper, um, in my opinion, more efficient uh, uh, dongle, okay? Um, and, I, and I do, if you go to diagnosticassociates.com, um, you can buy it directly through them. Um, they, they give really good support, okay? They were helping me uh, get the, the thing configured and stuff like that, okay? So, now that we have our correct uh, dongle, let's look at what the TSB says. So TSB service action number N4 
uh, F5V7. A potential concern has been identified on specific vehicles within the about vehicle identification number range. Certain vehicles installed with a uh, petrol engine may experience excessive cooling fan noises in the passenger compartment. All right, now, this is a, the exact symptom that my client was having. He was telling me that when, even when the engine was off, he would hear the fan running, okay? So he, he took the, the, the error code that was on his scan tool and he popped it into their uh, uh, repair information and that's how he came up with this, okay? Now, in order to solve this problem, if we read further, it says we need to update the powertrain control module and they give us the function route. So we're going to select ECU Diagnostics, select the powertrain control module, select update and follow the on-screen instructions. Okay, so now that we know what to do, let's go ahead and uh, see how we can reflash this PCM. All right, so I'm going to speed up some of this stuff and uh, share with you guys just a little bit of the interface, okay? Um, <clears throat> what I can tell you, their interface is quite user-friendly. Um, uh, I've, I've dealt with a lot and uh, I actually enjoy using their software, okay? So right now what it's doing is it's uh, auto-scanning the vehicle. If you look at the bottom right, you can see the voltage. Um, we have communication with the car and our computer, okay? And then you can see at the bottom there's the VIN number in the year, okay? So right now it's getting all the data. It's going to probably pick up the, uh, the mileage of the car as well pretty soon after it goes to the body control module. All right, let me just fast forward this a little bit. All right, so there we got the uh, odometer reading, okay? And then... Um, after it does this, it's going to give us a, uh, like a summary of the vehicle. Okay. Which you can see here. All right. And then on the right, you see guided diagnostics, um, ECU diagnostics, which allows us to scan the vehicle and do our programming. Um, I think what I did here, I just wanted to, um, walk the client through, uh, their interface. And uh, you can see there's the tab here. This is guided diagnostics. So for, so for those of you who don't know, uh, guide, guided diagnostics literally will take the symptoms or an error code and it walks you through that process. So this is one reason why I like this software is because uh, getting this type of data is difficult. Um, Identifix, they, from what I understand, my clients complain to me that they're not able to get a lot of European uh, information and this is pretty much getting it from the source okay so that's what I'm saying you guys don't be scared to uh, you know jump into the unknown like you know with a little bit of guidance and stuff uh, you can handle those fears easily all right so we're gonna go into the engine and the cooling system and uh, we know where to go, I'm just showing him around, but you can see here, look, these are the symptoms, fan consistently running. Now we could run through a diagnostic process and it'll tell us what to do, but you know, I just was just showing him you know, what options were there. So what I'm actually gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna exit out of here, and then um, I'm going to go to the ECU uh, diagnostics right here, okay, and then yeah, service is your service functions and topics is their uh, OEM repair information. And that is a separate purchase, um, unfortunately. Okay, so what's going to happen here is uh, it's going to scan all the modules of the car. Okay, you can see it went through everything. It shows the DTCs. And what we're going to do is we're going to look for the powertrain control module. Okay, and we can see that right here. Okay, it has three DTCs on it. All right, so once we've identified that, um, I think I'm going to select it. And then on the right here, we should get a, another prompt, which we do. Okay. All right, ECU information, reading error codes, reading 
error code for powertrain control module. Okay, so you can see the software update. It lets us know the status of it up to date. All right, you can see that it's not been up to date. And then on the right here, there's live data, there's ECU functions, there's clearing it. You can even um, have the option to replace modules. And, and this is good because on the Autel, on Land Rover, I don't see that option a lot um, to replace modules. So this is a huge moment that can help you save money uh, for your, your customer. Okay, so I went ahead and click update. And uh, this is where we're going to get to the uh, actual meat and potatoes. All right, let me just fast forward it a bit. Okay, update ECU will start now. So at this point, make sure like all your accessories are off, your doors are closed, um, and you have good voltage and your battery maintainers on because you do not want to <laughs> mess up something on this car. Okay, and then the first process of um, the updating, it's going to uh, erase, I guess, the uh, content that's on the EC right now. And then after it does that, it's going to then uh, install the latest calibration file. Okay, so let me just fast forward that a little bit. Let it do its thing. And um, yeah, as I said, this was a this was a tough one, but he was persistent. He you know bought all the laptops that I told him to get in terms of specs and the tools, and you know he he knew that the return of investment would be greater because with these guys, with these vehicles, you can charge a lot more for reprogramming. And when I when I tell people in terms of pricing their their reprogramming service. First, look at what the dealer charges. In some markets, the dealers are really expensive. On other markets, they're uh, not so expensive, but look at the journey that customer has to have, okay, to go to the dealer. Sometimes the dealer is very far away, all right? So even if it's cheaper, just that inconvenience of maybe getting the car towed or, you know, just driving to the dealer, waiting a week or so to get your car fixed, you know, people will pay to have their time shortened. So step one, compare at the dealer. Step two, look at what your current market is charging. Okay. Um, and that way you can gauge. And what I would tell you guys, some people have markets where let's say most of the client, you know, they, they don't have a lot of money. So it's, you know, they, they're not charging them a lot to help them out. That's fine. You can do that. But if you're somebody who wants to charge a premium, don't be afraid to stick with your your premium prices you can't do both okay I, I would say start off charging high as possible but you need to uh give reasons and value and value as to why your thing is higher so for example when people buy my tool my tools are way more expensive than uh what you'll find on ebay or amazon but they see the value in having someone like myself because they learn skills they make more money and they they're able to, you know, benefit from the tool. So it's worth it. So you need to, I guess, as a salesperson is, uh, you know, have a scale in your head. Um, is the value that they're going to get, you know, going to gonna be better than the cost that they have in their mind. Okay. It's all about value. Um, so that, yeah, that's what I recommend, but yeah, that's pretty much it, you guys. Um, you can see that we're going to have a, we have that green confirmation. Uh, let me see if it pops back up. And that just is let, it's going to let us know that the vehicle was programmed. All right, just finishing up. And at this point, the car started no problem. Um, and he indicated that the engine was no longer uh not the engine but the fan wasn't running at how it was before and um you know the his customer was happy and more importantly um he has a tool an oem tool that can accommodate to his you know 2018 2019 vehicles okay so that's pretty much it now what did we learn all right 
With Land Rover, make sure you have the right laptop specs to run the Land Rover software, okay? Um, if you don't know what to do, you can book a console with me and then I can decipher on which way to go. If you should get a dedicated laptop or if you should get a partition laptop, okay? And I'll tell you what specs you need. Um, second, if your maxi flash is not communicating, all right, you can use an approved J2534 or an OEM VCI. Now, a lot of people don't know how to thoroughly troubleshoot why their maxi flash is not working, okay? So you don't just have to just buy a, another one. Like, make sure you, I mean, do everything in your power to make sure and understand why. It could be a firewall, it could be other software, you know, it could be a lot of different things, but that's the strategy, okay? Um, third, SDD is for 20, 2005 to 2017 vehicles and Pathfinder is for 2018 and newer uh, newer vehicles. And as I said, the, the newer vehicles have that D, uh, diagnostics over IT, IP protocol, okay? Always check your TSB and service manuals before programming a module. And lastly, make sure you use a battery maintainer, okay? So with that, guys, um, that's going to wrap it up. If you're watching these videos and you're um, on the fence, you're, you're procrastinating because there's a lot of like, you know, hesitation, just book a consultation, okay? You're going to benefit it even if you don't buy from me. You just benefit it, benefit it a lot more if you do, okay? Um, I'll help you align you with the right tool and I'll also help you um, if you need help with the flash programming of things, okay? It's going to get worse, you guys. It's going to get worse, and we need to diversify our ways of solving certain problems. And flash programming is a good way to get your foot in the door, okay? So with that, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, you guys have a great week. I'll see you uh, next week. Take care. Bye.